It's a season of IPOs and bonus shares. Godfrey Phillips went up another 11% today. It has climbed nearly 70% in one month. A lot of retail people are trying to make money in this bonus issue. In today's nugget section, we'll try and demystify this mystery. Creation of additional shares. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of Friday the 13th. The insurance companies continue to sulk. Today also they were down. Today's hero was Wipro. Up 4%, Bajaj Finance and Bajaj Finserve, the twins continue to go up. This is in anticipation of a bumper listing next week because the share allocation process completed today. Even I got stocks for about 14,000 rupees. Let me know your experience. After the bumper day yesterday, today was the time for profit booking. Automobile was undecided. Software and banking were on the green side. The power pack was on the side of beers, however. And it was actually a fine balance between the beers and the bulls today. The sector which was on fire today besides banking was real estate. Now DLF got a re-rating. I don't know what the other people were up to. Just like the case of Hindalco where they monetized a large piece of land in Mumbai. Why are other players running? I have no idea. With respect to the closing prices of yesterday, Nifty closed slightly in the red. Bank Nifty was however up. Reliance just had a good day yesterday. Today it is back to red. Half a percent down. There is one thing I want to highlight in ATL today. It made another all-time high today. But this was a freak trade. So this point was just one blip. Maybe one order got executed. It's not even registered in the price chart. But the price just went up and immediately came down. But what happens is if you have kept a stop loss, then this freak trade could actually spike it even if one stock was traded at this level. One thing to note is most stocks had low volumes. ATL 40% less. Reliance 45% less. Today there was some interest in public sector banks. SBI was up. PNB, Bank of Baroda. Even some of the private banks, Axis, Indusind, they were up. Bajaj Finser went up. PFC down 1.5%. Today's trading range for Nifty was lower than yesterday, 0.4%. The opening point for Nifty today was the highest point of the day. Nifty is getting into the overbought zone now. Bank Nifty also had a lower range than yesterday, 340 points. It went up continuously after 930. Now interestingly in the last one month Bank Nifty has not attempted even single time to get into the overbought territory. In metals Hindustan Zinc and Vedanta were green. So were the steel stocks Tata Steel, NMDC, Sale. Today Page Industries made another lifetime high. Bid Delight also made another lifetime high. So did Britannia towards the later part of the day. Nifty literally no change today. Bank Nifty up 0.3%. Nifty IT was up a lot. Fifth straight day of buying for FIAs, they are in a party mood, so are DIAs. $3 billion bought by institutions in this month. Energy cracked and nothing much in next 50 or auto. The top 10 were actually in red today. Heavy profit booking after the steep run up in the last one or two hours yesterday. US markets yesterday were okay, everything green except Berkshire. Look at the trend of Berkshire, 7 straight down days. Silver is not reflecting the gains. However, the silver ETFs were up nearly 2.5-3% today. Gold is above 73,000. ADRs are looking good. Bitcoin is up. Trying to go for 60,000 yet again. Rupees strengthened a bit. And Brent is above 72 now. Now there are two good news today. SEBI has disposed the proceedings against NSC. So it's hopefully time for IPO now. Happy ending for the way for small investors like me. Now when Auto was making a Marine India, Ford exited the market. However, they are coming back. Right now they are saying that the first plant they will restart in Chennai that will be for export only. Nifty 50, the breadth was not that great today, 30 stocks down, 20 up. Wipro led the pack today followed by the Bajaj Twins, Axis Bank and SBI next. What was down today, Reliance, Bharti, ITC, HUL and Adani Ports. Volumes were low, especially for the stocks that fell. Next 50 also, 28 stocks down, 22 up. DLF, Vedanta, Jindal Steel, Canara Bank and PNB were up most. DLF has got an upgrade because of the potential in NCR, that is where they operate most. Zumato continues the seesaw, it was down most today, followed by Adani Power, Adani Energy, Godrej Consumer and PFC. In the software pack, Wipro was plus 4%, Zumato was minus 4%, the sector did not go anywhere. Energy sector corrected a lot after yesterday's gains, nearly all stocks were down. Volumes however were not very high which is a good sign, not too many people immediately trying to book profits. Now on a bad day, Oil India recovered a bit. Consumption pack also came under profit booking. One stock which didn't was Godfrey Phillips. 16 sectors up today. 
कंपेयर टू थर्टी फोर ये स्टडे द ग्रीड केम डाउन टू फोर्टी नाइन परसेंट जी आर एस सी एंड कोचिंग शिप यार्ड वर अपर बिट बट एरोस्पेस एंड डिफेंस डिड नॉट गो एनी वेयर नॉट मच बाइंग इंटरेस्ट इन ऑटोमोबील्स टूडे बैंकिंग अप लेड बाय बजाज फाइनेंस बिवरेजेज कंसॉलिडेट टूडे सोला बिवरेजेज कंसॉलिडेट टूडे द वाइन कंपनी सोला वाइन यार्ड वेंट अप पीडी लाइट वॉज अप टूडे ऑल्सो न्यू फिफ्टी टू वीक हाई डिक्सन टेक्नोलॉजी इज बैक इन द ग्रीन टूडे एल एन टी वॉज डाउन आर बी एन एल आई आर बी वर अप Kefin up two percent. They were the ones who handled the Bajaj IPO. Dima down today also. Insurance continues to sulk. LIC was up a little. Now the sector will bounce back when the next meeting of the GST committee happens, and they will go down again if no decision is taken. Investment banking was up significantly today. Motel was well up two percent after yesterday's fall. Today Siemens was up. ABB was down. Despite that, Disney M&A Network 18 is 53 percent away from its 52 week high. Metals were still solid today. Pharma only DRL is not green now. Big gains in real estate. So Zlon and Inox were up. Kalyan Jewelers up another four percent. This stock does not want to stop. Titan and Page Industries up a little only. Bharati corrected profit booking but did not fall much. Today was a no investment day. The trade from yesterday in options also closed in red. The same amount which I was mentioning yesterday around ten twelve thousand loss. But I prefer not to take that trade into Monday because decay was pretty heavy. Today, let's understand the process of new share creation. A lot of that is happening right now, and a lot of people in retail don't understand this process completely, especially the side effects of it. I'll talk briefly about it. If there are questions outstanding, let me know in the comment section. First, equity capital. What is that? When a company wants to raise public money, they go for an IPO. they take money from general public and a lot of investors which could be fis dis the general concept of equity is that the money would be returned to a company shareholders if all the assets were liquidated if company decides to shut down the business this is different from delisting so if a company has issued say 1000 shares with a face value of 10 rupees then the company's liability to you which is the shareholder capital will be 10000 rupees now these 1000 shares Could be right now at twelve hundred rupees per share in the stock market. That reflects the current earnings and future earning potential. This will be lot of money, lot more than ten thousand. Now there are various processes in which new shares are created or destroyed. I'll talk about some of them. IPO is the first time when the company goes public. These are created before this stage. There is something called pre-IPO also. Now pre-IPO shares are not traded on exchanges directly. They have an ISIN, but they are handled outside the stock exchange. There is a process called rights issue. It is a process to reward existing shareholders, not necessarily long-term holders. On the cut-off date, whoever is holding the shares, they will be eligible for the rights issue. So suppose you have hundred shares and the market price is thousand rupees. A typical rights issue would be for every ten share you hold, you will get a new share, say at nine fifty rupees, which is like a five percent discount from the market price. So you will be eligible to buy ten stocks. Into nine fifty bucks, and if you immediately sell it, then you will make fifty rupees into ten five hundred rupees. That's the general idea of a rights issue. If you are trying to trade, why rights issue is created? Typically, when promoters want to increase their holding in the company, they come up with a rights issue. It has a series of riders, terms and conditions. The typical one in the end, which no one goes through, if there are any residual shares which are unsold in the rights issue, suppose company saying we'll issue one lakh shares. Suppose only eighty thousand are issued, there is no demand. Then those twenty thousand, the promoters own the right to buy them if it is going unsold. This is how promoters increase their shareholding, especially if they are very close to the fifty percent mark, or if they fear an M and A hostile takeover. Lot of large companies have promoters who are thirty thirty five percent only, and they at times may want to take their holding up for any reason. Now what happens after rights issue is earnings remain same. You divide by more shares, say eleven hundred instead of thousand, so EPS reduces. That will impact all other metrics, including the price. The price will go down as well after the rights issue. But typically, rights issues are not that big in size. Two percent, five percent is the increase, so there is no noticeable difference for the general public. Bonus. This is the hot topic right now. Companies typically say one is to one bonus. Or two is to one bonus, which means if you hold one share, you will get two, which is the case of Gotra Phillips, I believe. Most retail believes that this is a free gift. If the share is at thousand rupees and they hold hundred shares, then they will make one lakh rupees out of it. 
lot of first timers hope that will be happen but it is not true so let's say there were 1000 shares one is to one bonus 1000 new were created in the end we had 2000 so the earnings will now be divided by 2k shares and the same process followed eps will become half all other metrics will follow suit share price will typically go down only now when bonus is given out there is something called x bonus date on that day you were supposed to have 2x shares but what happens is you get the bonus shares after 10 15 days so on the first day second day your inventory will be lot lesser than what should be because of the bonus prices may shoot up but you will not be able to make money if you bought it for trading reasons by the time you'll get the extra shares the price is usually cool down many people make losses only in the end that is because there is no increase in eps effectively now bonus does increase the share capital typically share capital says 100 bucks then reserves would be something like 1000 or 10000 a little trickle moves to shareholder capital for large companies this is typically true this is the liability of the company if liquidation happens after a 1 is to 1 bonus company will be liable to pay double the money to shareholders because face value has not reduced here number of shares has increased that is why money has to be moved from reserves to share capital column split slightly similar to bonus but lot different split means say 1 is to 10 if a share becomes very expensive then companies see the liquidity going down and they want to split it if split could be 1 is to 1 1 is to 2 1 is to 10 in case of Arun beverage yesterday the split was 2 is to 5 for every two share you got five shares just slightly odd number now split does not lead to shareholder capital increasing that is because a 10 rupee stock says splitting to 2 or 5 there will be additional shares but face value will go down eps here also comes down for the similar reasons because more shares are there earnings remain same also in case of split just like bonus no percentage increase in stake happens just like i mentioned in case of rights one more reason for bonus and split typically is that after the bonus split maybe six months one year down the line promoter may come back with something called buyback they'll say for every 10 stocks you hold we are happy to buy one stock back if market price is thousand rupees they may give 1100 1200 rupees also but note that this 200 rupee extra will be paid to you for only one stock not for 10 stocks Typical tendency of retail is to buy some additional shares, give something in the buyback. But if buyback is not approved, because a lot of people are trying to sell their shares, so in that buyback ratio, if it is not approved, you may not make any money. Typically what happens is in buyback, the promoters don't participate themselves. As a result, their holding goes up because they continue to hold the shares while the number of shares reduces in the market. Buyback has one more advantage. Suppose this is the earnings and this is the shares. Since shares reduce, the ratio earning per share actually goes up companies like tcs use it a lot they buy back shares to reduce shareholder capital but increase the eps i've discussed this topic and its advantages for companies like tcs in the videos for tcs infosys results few months back now delisting is when company does not want to be on the stock exchanges typical reason is promoters have a lot of money and they see a lot of value being created in future they don't want to share it with the general public so they'll take approval from shareholders and go for a delisting. In most cases, NCLAT has to provide an approval so that small shareholders are not swindled. This happened in the case of Reliance Retail. This was at pre-IPO stage only. Reliance Retail was going through the roof and the Reliance Group delisted it. Minority shareholders felt ripped off because they got a lot lesser price compared to what they paid for in the pre-IPO market. I was among them. I lost nearly 50% of money in that case. So delisting is not good at all for existing shareholders in most cases because they have bought the share because of this proposed future rise which they have anticipated and they don't get to make this money and they have missed out the opportunity of investing the money in some other stock at that time. There's something called preferential shares also there can be debentures which can be created into stocks. So there are various instruments which promoters use at times to increase their stake at a very cheap level. Typically, this process of creating more shares improves liquidity and makes units more affordable. For example, MRF stock is 1,30,000. It is very hard for retail to buy that because in India, you can't buy fractional shares. In US kind of markets, it doesn't matter because you can buy fractional shares. This process will typically lead to more trading and the PE goes up for most stocks after the price going down. The general sentiment is to buy small shares. In case of the new Bajaj IPO, the stock price is less than 100 bucks. Now weakness, this process is very much misunderstood. Just few months back, I lost money in PPCL, IOCL despite being in the market for so long. 
and retail usually loses money in the process most of the time unless they are long term shareholders the opportunities are mostly for promoters and long term holders i would say it is not even a opportunity for long term shareholders for example people might say that i bought 100 shares 20 years back after that i have got five bonuses if those five bonuses are not there in any case your price of the share would have been same only yes the p could have been lower because of the high individual unit price threats the approval process is lengthy for example it has been nearly 15 20 days since godfrey phillips has been contemplating that the board will approve this i think that date is now 20th of this month in this entire process the stock market keeps on speculating and once the speculation is over the prices come crashing down you might see that happening in godfrey phillips also these are absurd levels if it is just about bonus and there is nothing except cigarettes in that business i talked about the new share issuance process it takes 10 15 days my personal opinion is sebi should intervene here and they should create a process where bonus issues will be credit to the account on ex bonus day let the ex bonus day be slightly forward if required that will save a lot of retail from losing their money especially the first timers hope this was useful if anything was unclear let me know in the comment section but this is a very important topic if you try to make money in these share creation processes thanks for watching i'll see you on monday note monday and tuesday are not stock market holidays